Today is February 14, 2024. It's 5.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We got about 30 minute drive back. I had to go to Communist Massachusetts today. I'm on my way, I'm in, I'm in free country again. Across the border back into New Hampshire. And I was just thinking about that I should record something and what I should record and then poof I started thinking about Christians so this video is for Christians who consider themselves part of a political party and I don't care what political party, I don't care if it's the Democrats, the Republicans, the Libertarians, the Green Party, Socialists, this is for Christians. And I guess this could also be for Muslims. Uh, the reason I was thinking about this is a couple things. I have a really good friend, probably one of one of my best friends that uh, was a very conservative Republican when we first met, that is now more of an anarchist libertarian like myself, since we've been friends for over a decade now. And then I saw a nice little video on Twitter, or X, of a young black woman, she's like, 23 the video is making the rounds and she made a video about why I left the Democrat plantation and she's got a MAGA hat on and She just changed her life around by following the Word of God So she's like, yeah, why am I dating this man at 23? Uh, when I should be married And so they got married I don't want to get I'm gonna try and keep this PC because, but basically they were, I don't know exactly how she put it, but I'm going to say she was fornicating with her boyfriend and she just made the decision. She's like, well, I'm, if I'm, if I'm old enough to fornicate, then I'm old enough to get married. So let's get married. And so now they're married and they're both openly quote unquote MAGA. Uh, I don't know the her husband's not in the video. She's a young, uh, dark-skinned woman. But, uh, although I, I love the fact to watch people wake up, I actually put a message above this and said, you know, when you go from the Democratic Party to the Republican Party, you're still on a plantation. And she did respond to the comment and said, I'm not on any plantation. I walk the path of Christ, and I replied, well, that's good. Then you don't need government or political party at all. Continue to be a Christian, and God bless you and your husband. But I don't want to talk about this young lady or my friend that's Christian. I want to talk about the idea of... Let's do a quick little definition here. So, anarchy or anarchias, but on is without. Archias is, it's basically Greek, roughly translated to mean uh, no rulers, without rulers. It does not mean no rules. And so, where would these rules come from? And they would come naturally, and they would come in a couple of ways. Certain particular rules with consequences we understand are natural laws. Um, so I don't like the term rules. I like laws. I like God's laws or universal laws or scientific laws. However, it makes you feel comfortable to digest the information. But to focus this on people that self-identify as Christian or Muslim or, you know, uh, a faith, a 
natural consequences. I don't particularly like the idea of Sharia law because then that's a man-made law that although they're trying to follow the Quran, it can still be corrupted by man who's infallible. So if Allah or God or the universe has a something in place then they're the ones they're the individual that's going to judge and give the consequences out it should not be man if a man or woman human is doling out the consequences then they're playing God which in my mind for lack of a better term would be considered satanic because if God is in charge and he's created the playground in which we live the universe and his and his laws that must be followed and obeyed because he will be the one who judges then the consequences will be dealt out by him if you're not someone who believes if you're let me get a couple definitions out of the way here for this for sake of this conversation I want to define atheist agnostic and theist and I want these terms to uh, be understood through the rest of the conversation that they're terms that describe the belief of an individual, but they are not a existence claim statement or label. What do I mean by that? If I consider myself to be an atheist, I'm answering the question, do I believe in God? And if I do not believe in God, then there's a word in existence called atheist, which is one who has a lack in the belief of theism. And a theist is someone, if you ask them what their belief is of God's exist of of God's existence, not a proof of, but a belief, because theist is a uh, have faith that a God exists, but not proof, then they would say, yes, I believe that God exists. And someone that is agnostic would be in the middle. Do you believe in God? And they would say, I'm not sure of my belief. The one that actually worries me the most is the agnostic, because it means they have not thought to know thyself enough to know whether or not they have a belief in God or not. And I also think a lot of self-proclaimed atheists are actually agnostic and don't know what their belief is because they they say, I haven't really thought about it. It's not worth thinking about because God doesn't exist. But you should at least think about it to yourself to know because your DNA does transfer some of this from past history and it's part of getting to know your thyself and diving into that. So I think it's a a sign of a very shallow individual who hasn't explored their own personal beliefs on large topics that affect mass parts of society and large blocks of their neighbors and neighboring countries and the way that we communicate with one another. But so now that the definitions are away, if you currently do not believe in a God, then I would suggest for, for this particular talk, I want you to think of God as more of the structure that you have faith in, such as science, that we currently know that gravity exists, and I use this example a lot, it's a very simple example. If you know that gravity exists, and you can do a test today 
that gravity exists and something will fall at 9.8 meters per second squared in a vacuum situation. And you did that yesterday, and you did that today, and you did that an hour from now, and you did that two hours from now, and you did that in uh, Massachusetts, and you did it in California, and you did it in Timbuktu, and you did it on the moon, there's a different gravitational, gravitational pull, so the mathematics would be a little bit different. But if you have faith that it will happen at all those locations, for the sake of this conversation, I would like you to take that faith that there is a communication, if you will, a, a, a reality that's woven together in all those locations that is a constant order within the universe. And if you can conceptualize that gravity not only exists in your bedroom, but it exists in your kitchen, and it exists in your local library, and it exists in places that you haven't been, even though you can, you, if you have faith that that is there, I want you to, to think of whatever it is that is part of that science that makes that natural law exist, you could, for sake of this conversation, think of that as God. So now I think I've covered uh, Christians, Muslims, atheists, and if you're agnostic, I would suggest that you maybe open your eyes and, <laughs> and there, during this conversation and take a better time to um, get to know thyself because I am trying to teach some philosophy here. Uh, as far as me personally, I have a, uh, what I would consider a unique situation because I do not believe in God, such as a supernatural being outside of the universe. Uh, if you do uh, if you try to validate the concepts of a, you know, a being that is all-knowing and, and omniant, but also uh, omnipotent, but also changes and works within, and it's why, then it's like it, it depends what definition of this supernatural. Like I don't believe in the supernatural, but I believe a lot of the stuff that people consider supernatural to be unknown, discovered science that's woven into the universe. However. I also believe that on top of the reality of the world, there is also unseen but trackable morals and ethics also woven into that. And as people were tracking objective science, what they were viewing through the history, there was other theologians tracking the moral stuff woven into that fabric wondering why there was moral outcomes woven into uh, reality of non financial consequences. And I also fall into the category of someone that believes in free will. So I made a conscious choice to live my life in a manner in which I function and act if God does exist, even though, uh, based on the evidence, reason, and stuff that I went through, I discovered it from that evidence that I did not believe in God, but to me, that would be deterministic, and I like to particularly, I choose to be have free will, and cho I choose to believe in God, I choose to have faith in the existence of God. Now you'll say, well, then are you saying that you hold two contradictory uh, pieces of a lifestyle inside your brain? And I say, yes. People do it every day. I'm making a conscious decision to do it. And I ran a test. And I suggest that you run the test too. 
the test would be go to bed tonight and have a conversation with your conscience or your God, whatever you want to call it, look to the world, act in a way as if God exists when you wake up, when you go to bed, and on your daily routine, and check if your life gets better. If your life gets better, do it again. If your life gets worse, maybe stop. I'm not saying ask for wishes. I'm not saying I wish that I had a million dollars. I didn't get it. God doesn't exist. I'm saying just have conversations with God every day. Call it praying. Call it meditation. Call it the universe. Call it electrical chargers. Call it vibes. Or call it priming your, uh, your subconscious memory or mind. Whatever you want to do. But if you act in a particular manner, if there's an existence of a God or, or a being that's connecting us all, and just track for a couple of days if life starts getting improved and gets easier, and if it does, continue down that path, and if it doesn't, make new decisions. I found that when I act in a manner where God exists, that my life improves and it gets better, easier, more relaxed, and comfortable. Okay. The huge preface for a small topic and now I got about 10 minutes before I'm home I'm an exit two exits away from my house the government is a, a satanic entity <laughs> beep, beep, beep. <laughs> QAnon no I'm not being I'm not pulling a, a QAnon here but I want I want to I want to be come from a place of empathy so whether you're a Christian a Muslim or an atheist or an agnostic I want you to put your shoes in another person's feet uh, your feet in another person's shoes for a moment here and just think think about this so if you believe that there is a God that's in charge of all this stuff and his natural order and his plan is already set or the rules that he created, but I will call them laws. If there's set laws, unchangeable laws that you cannot obey, just like gravity, that are set into place, a, a small example, for instance, they say, do not fornicate, do not have sex before marriage, right? If you were to take that out, if you were to do that, People say, well, I don't, I want the freedom to have sex. And it's like, you have the freedom to have sex. You can. But then you're going to risk disease. You're going to risk unplanned parent, parenting. You're going to risk mating and having sex with an individual that might not be there to gather your resources or can cheat on you or can hurt you or can steal you. So there's a lot of negative consequences that you then have to avoid. So the way to avoid that would be to not have sex before marriage and then if you marry it would be for life but also instead of the marriage being a government contract if you think of the marriage as your DNA being married with your spouse's DNA and having a child the child bond binds you for life and that is the marriage the child is the marriage the sex the relationship you have is not the marriage the child is the marriage of the two 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 DNA strands that are put together this Valentine's Day Ooh, how do you make a heart with your hands I don't know the skank hands I don't know how to do I don't know how to do a heart anyways uh, so if that's going on you're free to live outside that you're free to make decisions that aren't that but if the government comes along and tells you that things aren't going that well and from a libertarian point of view this would be like I recommend everybody go watch the S read the essay or watch the video I pencil it shows how people voluntarily interact with one another in their own best interest but it helps the collective and if you ask me why I don't know so if we want to put something in that gap we can call it God and then you'll say well that's the God of the gaps theory Yes. Perfect. Fine. Why do you have to make it a negative? The placebo effect is still a fact. And if it's positive, why do you have to try to turn it into a negative? So if you follow Christ or you follow 
God or you follow a religion where there's a God that is in charge of these things and he has laws already set up and a group comes along and says well instead of you being protected by that we're going to do this and we're going to take money from you to do it and if you don't follow the rules that we're carving out you're going to get thrown in a cage then they don't trust God's plan and if you're part of that you're saying you don't trust God's plan and in which case you are acting a satanic way and I'm going to define satanic as in against the natural order of things so if you what's a good like what's a good example let me just think here just any any of this stuff so for instance okay without government you know uh, without government then people would murder and God says thou shall not murder but it does not say thou shall not kill that's a misrepresentation it's thou shall not murder so you are allowed to self-defend it's similar to the non-aggression principle in libertarian um, circles where the initiation of the force is a negative but you can use force in defense of yourself so thou shall not murder so you're saying well what so people can just run around with murder without the government he's like well if you were free to defend yourself then if somebody tried to murder you you could defend yourself and kill them and then it would put immediate consequences on those who were, who were violent they would be killed and if you murder somebody and this is not everybody this is people with inner monologues and conscious these are humans and I don't want to get into a whole big debate on this but just every homo sapien hip sapien is not a human a human was a very precise word for an individuals of a particular group that evolved in a particular way that had empathy and stuff like that for one another so I would have to give a big speech because people are like oh you're calling people subhuman I was like I'm not calling them subhuman that's your immediate superiority words but I'm saying yes there's people that walk around on bipedal primates that are homo sapiens sapiens that are not humans and I don't want to get into it so that if you lived in a society where murderers were getting consequences of being killed because you could defend yourself or if people were found to murder even if they weren't even if they weren't caught and they were human meaning they had some sort of empathy in pain they would be in a living hell they would be stressed a lot of average people that commit murder will end up telling on themselves and they end up telling on themselves because the guilt is creating a hell on earth for them so they can't live the stress and everything is overwhelming and it's destroying them so they end up t telling on themselves so that would be their hell that they that they live in and if you want to live in heaven and be happy and be excited and full of love and keep your child like um, existence and harmony with the world and feel light on your shoulders and successful and loving and caring to your family and your children and you don't want to be dragged down like you're being pulled into hell if you want to be lifted your spirit up and feel light and excited in everyday life then thou shall not murder and if you think of it more like that it's a natural consequence this is 2,000 plus years of people writing about these situations uh, to, to throw them away as if they mean nothing um, even from a scientific point of view I mean people are studying all sorts of things they're studying the pyramids and they're studying fossils and they're trying to, and they're like now nah, this book throw it away it's it's useless ignore it <laughs> so 
I'm at my destination. I'm at the grocery store. I'm gonna buy some over overpriced food. Hopefully not sprayed in poison. But if you're a Christian or of some religious denomination where you believe that there's a God, I would highly suggest that you look at the government and realize that if God has a plan and things are organized by his plan, or if there's an invisible hand of the market that controls things with us, connected as an ecosystem together as humans, then take that leap of faith that we'll be okay if that destructive en entity that runs on thou shalt, th they, they break all the rules. Thou shalt not murder. And the government is doing worse. They're, they got armed thugs in blue costumes running around, pointing guns at people to stop them. And you have thou shalt not steal. They're taxing and taking part of your pr productivity. Um, it's the opposite of everything that the religion teaches. It's the opposite of natural order and natural consequences. And if you were to think of the earth and when the uh, devil was cast out or cast down, to earth was pulled pulled down weighted down by him by him not um, wanting to follow the laws created by God and create his own laws if you think about it like that then the government looks like the system that he would create it's saying that the world is chaotic that God is evil and, and wrathful and natural order is wrathful and that's not what you want come to me i'm in charge i'm going to create these rules in our particular way and we're going to carve this out and don't have faith in anything tomorrow it's all chaotic it's not going to be there you're not safe without us those are devilish and satanic words and i'm using those depending on your perception or where you're hearing this from, the religious, I'm, I'm, I mean those exactly as they are. And if, I, if you are not religious, not I shouldn't say religious. Religious is like, uh, if you're a theist, go back to the definition. If you're a theist, I want you to look at those words directly. I mean, the government is devilish and the agents of the government are devilish and satanic. And if you're an atheist and you don't, then I want you to say to yourself, you know, do you believe in natural, the natural laws of the universe? And do you have faith that they figure themselves out and that actions have consequences and that you can figure those out on your own without somebody forcing you in a particular direction? Because if they force you in a particular direction, it could be the wrong direction. And if you go in the wrong direction and find the wrong consequence, you want to immediately turn on a dime to go in a new direction so you have better consequences, positive consequences. And if you can't do that, could you see how that could be a satanic path away from natural order? So I guess the, the takeaway from this, this talk here, and I'm, I don't know why I'm talking Ooh, whoa, talking with my glasses like this. I guess the takeaway from this is empath to be empathetic towards a couple of things. Be empathetic towards yourself and your future self. So if you believe that actions have consequences and you want to be content or have contentedness or so you have a better chance at happiness because it's a lot easier to get to be happy to have joy and happiness when you're at a baseline of contentedness where if you're sad and depressed it's a big spike up to to happiness and joy 
then make choices today and decisions today so that your future self that you have empathy for is in a good position. And have empathy for those who have a, a different belief than you by looking at your belief and seeing the parallels within the other person's belief. And it's, we're always like, um, sh like uh, attacking other people's things, but a good practice of empathy is to steal man somebody's argument like I just did, or I tried to do to the best of my ability. So instead of attacking a Christian as an atheist, or a theist as an atheist, and saying, God's make-believe, what are you doing? You're dumb, there's no man on a cloud. It's like, well, that's the 16-year-old, like, first experience with God idea. And they do explain it. Some, some, some people do explain it like that, which I don't believe it is. But if you kind of think about it from their perspective, like, well, what? so yes, we know that gravity exists. Yes, we know that the moon orbits the Earth and the Earth orbits the sun. And we know particular things, you know, that water uh, turns to steam at a particular temperature or water turns to ice at a particular temperature. And it always happens like that everywhere and all the time. Why? Why, why, why? And, you, you know, you can be... You can be jaded and not try to be empathetic and be combative with them and say, well, you're, you're ignorant. That's because of X, Y, and Z. Or you could be empathetic and look at it from their point of view and realize, yeah, it does kind of make sense that there is a, there is something, a, some sort of language, some sort of entity being, uh, for lack of a better word, that is in there it's you know what i mean we, we often project what we what we are onto things but not all life is us you know what i mean so if you were to say well we were made in god's image you're like oh so god's a, a human he's like well what if you were to think about this and steel man their argument and think okay well Things are made out of electrons, neutrons, protons, and then the major elements. So what if the elements work together and they want to create like a projector of what they're living in their life? So you have nitrogen and carbon and oxygen and all this stuff. And they project us into their world like a simulation. So we are created in their image on their image the way that they work um because the reality of the situation is not to get too woo woo here but we're seeing a very small portion of reality we're seeing the part that we can comprehend but like i'm you know we say i'm touching my beard but i'm not touching my beard you know what I mean? My hands are touching the force around my beard that it's made of. And we're saying that I'm made of something, but really I'm just clumps of everything else that's around me that's made of, of the same thing. And so when you really start looking the other way, then we all, you know, they say ashes to ashes, dust to dust. So it kind of looks like match, like magic in the matrix. So if you look at the matrix and you look at binary code in the computer, what we're trying to create we're taking ones and zeros and codes and building worlds into a metaverse. But if you pull it back, there's just the world that we live in is put together by these, you know, by these main elements, by these atoms, electrons, neutrons, protons, all working together in the background, in the periodical chart. So whenever you're looking at something, it's made up of those components. And some of them are more stable than other components. And why is that? And you can say just because, but maybe that's part of the plan. And even the instability is a constant. So even something that seems to be unstable always is unstable, which makes it constant. And why is that? If something was truly unstable, it would mean that it's sometimes it's stable and sometimes it's unstable. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know I mean? But it's not. It's always constantly unstable, and other things are always constantly more stable, and it's on, uh, on a spectrum when you break down these different elements that we see. And then those stabilities change based on temperatures, which can also be measured. And it's always the same with those all those temperatures, which is even though the temperature different per different element, each element then has its same temperature that's a constant. So there's a lot of stuff that we're figuring out that is that is woven in that is very organized, but it's such it's so massive amount of information we've barely peaked. In the darkness of the entire universe, is a, a little speck of light on the the, the, the top of a, a needle of figuring things out. And so that can seem scary. So, in closing, again, <laughs> the idea of God in organization, in science, in the universe being woven together. If you want to be combative, you can look at them as in opposition of one another. But if you want to come together and be united and try to be empathetic towards one another, I would look at the person that you think has a difference in agreement with you and try to steal man their argument. Steal man meaning to build up the strongest argument for them that you possibly can based on being empathetic and flipping it into a type of language where the two of you can meet because people are individuals and they are experiencing things in different different ways and again with the glasses here wow i just saw a beautiful girl wow. so all right i'm really gonna go get some groceries i think i've said enough enough craziness 37 minutes I'm hoping by this point I've been posting a video every day since January 1st and I started doing some shorts and I'm learning how to do the search engine option optimization and I am starting to get some some views on rumble some views on no, this lady, this lady in her car, <laughs> looking, ac looking across at me after I just did the glasses and the thumb thing. She's trying to make sense of the world right now. It's beautiful. And uh, so I know there are some people, I don't expect this show to get massively huge because there's a small portion of the, the population that even enjoys these conceptual uh conceptual ideas of the world around them there's another smaller portion that can understand them and then they'd have to they have to like me and then i have to be a good enough communicator <laughs> to make them understand and uh that's a lot of things that gotta line up but i'm having fun doing it and if i help a few few people uh i'd really enjoy that currently as i do this i think i got 50 youtube subscribers now which is amazing a little over that so thank you for that i have maybe 900 people on x which is amazing uh, i'm on BitChute and i have my website and i've been doing a blog every day and uh, i'm on rumble and rumble's paid me one penny so i'm getting rich off this so um if you like this share this please comment give me some more ideas I'm going to soon go into the studio. I have it set up. I just got a new boot drive for my computer that's going to make it faster. We have the technology. It's going to be faster, quicker, more powerful. Uh, so I'll have my camera set up, my lights soon. I'll be in studio. But to me, getting this information out there and the authenticity is more important than perfect, clear audio, perfect, clear video, and all that stuff. So, okay. Take care, everybody.